Good morning. Uh, my name is Dr. Robert Groisman, and today I'm going to be handling uh, the big one, parosmia. And why do people get parosmia from long COVID? So let me uh, preempt this um, talk with saying that these are my own medical opinions. Uh, they're not necessarily a fact or a factual theory. These are based on um, medical education and my medical judgment and based on the available evidence uh, so far. So parosmia, as you know, is one of the biggest problems from long COVID. It has a lot of um, implications. Uh, one is obviously uh, problems with eating and drinking and being able to sustain a normal diet. Um, the second, which is just as bad, is the isolating part of, um, of parosmia. You're no longer able to participate with the gatherings or family gatherings or friends. And um, a lot of people don't understand why you're not able to because smell and taste, you can't explain to somebody, you know, how can it go bad? Um, why does it go bad? Um, especially if they've never experienced it or had it, they don't know what is going on. So how do we smell? How do we smell things? Um, everything uh, revolves around the olfactory bulb, which sits on the upper portion here of the curbiform plate. This, this sits in the skull area. And it sends down these nerves through these little holes. And when you inhale or when you're chewing and eating, these molecules, these chemicals, contact these nerves and they set them off. Now, each nerve is able to recognize two or three different um, types of chemicals. And there's approximately 350 to 400 uh, uh, useful types of nerves or they're able to sense different chemicals. Um, so the actual smell perception comes in the brain. Uh, when the olfactory bulb receives the signal, it determines what it's supposed to smell like. So um, there's also support cells and epithelium surrounding this area. There's the epithelium here. And the support cells nourish and take care of the nerve cells. Um, you know, as I said, uh, the perception of smell is, is actually happening in the brain. And um, no more than you can explain to somebody what red is uh, without actually saying red or reddish. The same thing is with uh, smell and taste. Um, go ahead and try um, describing what you smell to somebody without actually naming what you smell. Uh, it's very difficult. It's actually impossible. So uh, what about taste? Um, so between 75% and 90% of what we think is actually taste is coming from smell. Um, so that this, this gusia can be uh, predominantly from the parosmia that happens in the nose, uh, not necessarily a separate process. So what is parosmia? You know, we've mentioned it a few times. Uh, well, first off, it is one of the landmark uh, symptoms from long COVID. It, de it did exist before long COVID. There are a few conditions and medications that can cause it but it didn't really gain notoriety until uh, long COVID and COVID-19 uh, hit, hit the scene. So all it means is it's abnormal sense of smell. It doesn't mean bad or good, just abnormal. Um, what you remember smelling like, the object smelling like is no longer what it smells like. Um, so like I said, it could be pleasant or unpleasant and um, it's oftentimes unpleasant could smell like garbage, like rotten eggs, like spoiled food, like sewage, or chemical smell. Uh, it can apply to many different foods and drinks, but uh, seven really stand out. Um, that would be coffee, eggs, uh, peanut butter, chocolate, garlic, and onion, and uh, some meats like chicken and beef. So there are several um, parosmia theories or hypotheses that have been floating around um, since, um, since the first case of parosmia was diagnosed. So the first one is um, inflammation. So inflammation around or near the, the, the cleft 
uh, the olfactory cleft, and it basically obstructs the chemicals from being able to hit the nerve endings and set them off. Uh, the second one is uh, epithelium damage. That support epithelium that has all of the support cells um, that becomes damaged. Um, the third hypothesis talks about um, actual infection of the olfactory nerves. So the COVID virus would um, infect each of those nerves and cause damage that way. And the fourth one is um, abnormal reconnection of, of these nerves, of these olfactory nerves uh, to the olfactory bulb. In other words, the wires get all mixed up and um, this kind of shows the picture. So it's almost like a mismatched wiring theory. So why do some people develop delayed parosmia? So let's say any of these theories are true. Um, there was an infection, there was some damage to either the support cells, the epithelium, or the neurons, um, but you don't develop parosmia day one. Why is that? Well, your, your body is recuperating and repairing, regenerating these tissues, and um, after some point, um, things are pretty much back to normal, but it's still not working well. Your body tries to compensate. It always does. No matter what, no matter what is wrong, what is damaged, your body tries to make compensations to, to basically get back to normal, as close to normal as, as you can. And it's this compensatory mechanism that I think that's causing the parosmia. It tries to get the blood flow and the inflammation, everything else down and controlled, but it doesn't um, quite fix it. So um, some people have been reporting going back and forth. Um, you have parosmia, um, you go on, on break for a couple of days or you go into a different environment and something changes. Um, your smell is back and it's instantaneous. It basically goes back to normal and uh, you, feel, you feel great and elated and happy. Yay, I, um, I'm, I'm cured of parosmia uh, for, for it to basically return back to ground zero or square one um, when you return back to your normal environment. Um, so is it the vacation? Is it the, the relaxation um, of being on vacation? Uh, some people think it's you know being in an airplane and um, being in the air, the altitude. So what is really going on? So your, your body basically has an unstable and fragile autonomic nervous system is what I believe is happening, okay? And depending on your current state of stress and other other variables, um, it kind of wanes and goes back and forth between good state and the bad state. It's almost there, but it's not quite. And it can't stay in that unstable state. So it picks one or the other. And unfortunately, many times it picks the parosmia again, because that's what it's been used to. Um, stop looking at the blood work. It's not going to be in the blood work. There's not going to be one marker that says this is the cause of the parosmia. Um, it's not going to be the hemoglobin. It's not going to be an interleukin. It's just you're not going to find the answer in, in blood work. Um, fix the problem. Um, stop looking for a marker. I propose dysautonomia as the cause of the parosmia. It perhaps is not directly responsible for, for the parosmia, but... Um, it can be responsible indirectly. So there, there are several examples of um, dysautonomia occurring and has been occurring, including POTS, including uh, that's postural orthostatic uh, tachycardia syndrome, um, including diabetic autonomic neuropathy, which is probably the most common cause of an autonomic neuropathy. And none of these seem to cause a problem with smell or taste. So. Uh, one way to look at this is, is that the system is segmental. The, your autonomic nervous system is segmental, which means it, it, it works in pieces. One part can work without the other one working, or one part could be abnormal while the others are normal. So what I think is happening with the, with the other forms of dysautonomia, it's, it's not really affecting um, the face or the cranial nerves as much as um, COVID or long COVID is. So why does the stellar ganglia unblock work? And why does it work immediately? 
So the response is uh, within 30 seconds to a minute of performing the block. You know, is it working? Is it correcting the inflammation within 30 seconds? It's, it's unlikely. Um, is it rewiring the olfactory nerves back to normal? Um, like one theory suggests, well, that's also impossible. It's not going to be able to do that um, in, in 30 seconds or a minute. So the more likely reason that uh, this is being caused is um, there's a change in the sympathetic nervous system drive. Okay, Whether this controls inflammation within a day or two is quite possible. Um, it does correct the high sympathetic tone that your body is under, under long COVID. Uh, and uh, it also increases uh, some regional and micro blood flow in your brain, plus in your face and your head and your neck, and even in your chest area. So uh, um, part of the problem with long COVID is the blood flow is altered, uh, being on a, under a chronic sympathetic state. What about vagus nerve stimulation? So this is a secondary way of, of correcting uh, the parosmia. So this is a longer process. This, this can take anywhere from 30 to 90 days or even longer of daily use of stimulating uh, the vagus nerve at, at the ear, usually the tragus or the any part of the ear called the concha or the concha sim, simba concha. Um, it does increase the parasympathetic um, and the vagus nerve function, which is what we want, but we can only do it for a short time each day because if you do it all day, your system is going to shut down. The vagus nerve is going to stop responding, and uh, you really won't um, you really won't uh, get much benefit out of it. Uh, it is a slow way to do it, but it does work. It has worked for many. Um, it also indirectly downgrades the the sympathetic nervous system because they're linked through a reflex. So when one goes up, the other one goes down. So here are two different um, methods of correcting the parosmia and uh, parts of um, long COVID symptoms that use two different approaches, but use a similar mechanism. So this really supports the dysautonomia uh, hypothesis for the cause of long COVID and parosmia. So what are some other treatments that I've seen and heard or heard about? Um, you guys may have tried this already. Um, neti pot, nasal flushing. This again um, goes towards the problem being at, um, at the olfactory cleft. Um, how well has that worked? Um, nasal steroids. Uh, there's several prescription steroids that could be sprayed into the nose um, for, for a long time. How has that worked? Uh, olfactory retraining and smell training. Uh, now this one, uh, there haven't been too many success stories, unfortunately. Uh, and this one works mainly based on the theory of uh, rewiring, as in um, the nerves kind of got mixed up when they were reconnecting and connected to the wrong ones. And by training yourself with smell, uh, with different smells, you, you will retrain your brain to recognize the smells again. Um, Study-wise, that has not proven to be a success. Um, some people claim some success with gabapentin or amitriptyline. These are nerve agents. They basically relax or calm down nerves or angry nerves. Um, then there's the uh, workaround method, which is eating bland, bland diets. There's several diet books that have been published for, specifically for parosmia with the goal of trying to get people to eat something that they can tolerate. Uh, and lastly, there's nasal theophylline um, that's been proposed and that has had some success with hyposmia um, rather than parosmia. Um, thank you so much. I hope that has answered some of your questions uh, about parosmia. And again, these are my own theories and thoughts um, uh, and, um, and judgments based on the available information and evidence. Thank you so much um, and don't forget to subscribe.